Welcome to EPG Part Shala. In the subject of information technology, in the paper of mobile computing, our today's module is IEEE 82.11, very popularly known as Wi-Fi. The topics which we'll be discussing today are introduction to wireless local area networks. That will we'll understand what is WLAN. what are the advantages of wlan what are the types of wlans which are available as in infra uh, infrared wlan or radio based wlan we will discuss ieee 82.11 standards because ieee 82.11 uh, when we talk about it it is uh, uh, a standard as a whole but it actually consist of a family of standards underneath it then we will see what are the different modes in ieee 82.11 works and we will just look at the introduction uh, we'll just look at the architecture of uh, IEEE, uh, ieee 82.11 to start with what is wireless local area network there are two keywords in this phrase wireless means no wires are being connected and local means the area would be small or a local place so wireless local area networks is a collection of devices which are connected to each other via air interface which can be uh, through electromagnetic waves as in uh, they can be connected by infrared waves or they can be connected by radio waves and so on but if we look at the formal definition of wlan we can say that a wireless local area network implements a flexible data communication system frequently augmenting please uh, mind this word augmented rather than replacing a wired lan within a building or a campus this is a formal definition provided by cisco and it can be found at uh, its uh, website cisco.org so wlans transmit and receive data over the air using different bands of electromagnetic spectrum like infrared or radio waves the point which i have highlighted it here is augmenting and replacing that is it can be seen as a supporter to the wired network but not the replacer let us look at some of the advantages of wlan over wired lan we all are using wlan in our day to day life and we all are very much familiar with the advantages of them it provides a support of anywhere any time ubiquitous computing but just formal advantages let us look at them first advantage is of course the mobility you can move anywhere and you can still be connected to the network you are in a airport you connect to the hotspot of the airport you are connected with the world so it's anywhere any time and the very important advantage is that it provides real time information which is necessary for many time critical situations in which the decision according to those events plays a important role like your stock uh, information or your weather information and many other low implementation cost yes one might wonder that the wireless routers when you purchase now you are very well fa familiar with the wireless routers also because more or less many of our homes are having wifi so the wireless routers cost uh, much then you might wonder that how i am saying that it is a low implementation cost but yes low implementation costs does not mean only the monetary cost it is the cost in terms of the maintenance it is the cost in term of the time which is required to establish it so it is easy to set up relocate change and manage as i said the initial cost of the hardware may be higher than wired networks wireless routers cost a much but overall installation expenses that is the manpower required or the time required to install the wireless lan is very much less as compared to wired lan and of course the recurring cost that is the maintenance cost are also lower as compared to wired because suppose if a wired network fails due to a cable fault then you will have to uh, 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 if it is underground cable you will have to dug up the whole thing or if it is not underground then you will have to uh, change the topology and everything installation speed is 
fast and easy. We all know about it. One fine day, I feel like I want to have Wi-Fi at my home. I'll just give a call to the subscriber. In a uh, day or a two, they will put a router. And once the router is installed, I'm having a Wi-Fi within no time. Network expansion. Yes, uh, it's a very well-known saying that wireless can go where wires cannot. So there are some places where the wired connection or the wired networks are not feasible, like you are underneath the ground for submarine communication and many other places. So in those places, the blue lines are more helpful. So uh, and they can also penetrate through the buildings and the walls. More users can be accommodated. Yes, the user installation to uh, user base to installation ratio is more in WLAN and they support more uh, higher capacity than the wired networks. How? Now, suppose if I want to connect uh, two devices, using one connection only two devices can be connected. But in wireless network, if we talk about one channel which can support eight users and if I have ten channels available to me in the required bandwidth, so total users which can be uh, supported are like 8 multiplied by 10 that is 80 users where in wired you just have when you have an end to end connection only the number of users would be those who are connected through that wire. Reliability. Now, most of the failures in wired network is due to the cable failure and that fear is not here. So, in that sense they are more reliable than the wired networks. Scalability. What do you mean by scalability? Something which can be increased easily. So, W lines are easily scaled, they can be easily scaled to the increased number of users. Once you have the uh, setup, then the number of users, like suppose if you have a, a router configured, the number of users that can connect to the wires can be easily increased. And uh, the, uh, also there is no fixed topology. So, the configurations can also be changed easily. And the most important advantage is it is it works on a license free band that is ISM band. ISM stands for industrial, scientific and medical. Now, initially this was the band which was available only for these three purposes hence it was known as ISM band. But as we will see in the next uh, uh, sections also that uh, in 1985 it uh, they were deregulated uh, these uh, uh, industrial scientific and medical committees were deregulated from the use of this band, it was publicly available, which led to the increase in the development of wireless communication standards. So, Wi Fi or IEEE 82.11 standard also uses ISM band, which is totally license free. Robustness. It can, it can survive uh, many disasters like in the case of earthquakes or floods or some natural disaster, the uh, wired network will completely collapse, but the wireless will not because they have no uh, particular topology or they have no particular infrastructure. Only if the router is survived, you are survived for the connection. Planning. When we uh, want to set up a wired network, we have to see the area, we have to see the number of host, we have to see the topology, how or where we will place the switches and hubs and everything. So, all that planning has to be done in advance. No such planning is done for WLANs. So, we have seen some of the advantages of WLAN. Now, uh, as we said that the wireless LANs do not need wires, they just communicate via electromagnetic waves. So, depending on which part of the electromagnetic wave is being used, the WLANs can be divided into two categories, infrared and radio waves. Infrared WLAN, they communicate by the use of infrared waves like you have seen uh, uh, the example of the remote control at your home that is also infrared communication because the remote control uh, and the sensor on the te television communicate through each other via infrared. So, in infrared W lens transmission takes place on infrared band which is 900 nanometer of wavelength. Senders uh, can be the, the, the source of uh, transmission are uh, the light emitting devices 
like LED laser etcetera and the receptors should be sensitive to those light. So, they are photoreceptors. It is very simple and a cheap technology because the light emitting diodes or the sources are cheap and it can be easily integrated to handheld devices providing an interface for infrared data association. They support data rates up to 4 megabits per second of course, license free and important advantage is, is that the electrical devices do not interfere with it as in the case of radio waves that if there are uh, electrical, dev electrical devices along with the radio waves they would be affected, the transmission would be affected. But also everything has strength, it also has weakness. So, what are the limitations of infrared data association? Yes, infrared is a very high frequency component of electromagnetic waves and when we transmit on high frequency, we use directional antennas, hence line of sight is required. IRD devices are connected to a serial port, hence the data rates are not very high. They cannot penetrate through walls or obstacles as the radio waves cannot and as compared to the radio transmission, the range is limited. Now, another flavor that is uh, the WLAN which we will be discussing in this module is based on radio waves. So, the radio based LANs they transmit at 2.4 gigahertz ISM band, they do not need line of sight. In some case, if uh, purely directional antennas are used, they might uh, need line of sight, but not as precisely as the infrared WLAN. They cover large areas. Important uh, advantage over infrared data association is that they can penetrate through walls and obstacles. You can see that uh, uh, the infrared can be easily obstacles. Have you ever tried to come in the way of the remote control and the television your, when your mother is watching your uh, uh, watching her favorite television program? You would be in danger. So, uh, why, why that has happened? Because the uh, infrared waves that were generated from the remote control got uh, uh, you were the obstacle in between the remote control and the television sensor, but it is not that much in the case of radio waves. The data rates of uh, radio based LANs are of the order of 100 Mbps, which is uh, more or less uh, they are up to 54 Mbps only, but the highest data rates are up to 100 Mbps. Again, there must be some limitations also. So, what are they? The radio waves can interfere with the electrical appliances or other radio devices. Yes, uh, like suppose uh, uh, I am communicating via uh, some uh, uh, I am communicating via radio waves and some uh, electrical devices or some other uh, device which is operating on radio waves may uh, have the problem of interference with each other. Very few license free bands are available, the only license free band available is 2.4 gigahertz to 2.5 gigahertz ISM band and they are harmful for human beings in contrast with infrared which are harmful only at high powers, but radio waves are harmful for uh, uh, to human beings. Therefore, they cannot be used in sensitive places like hospitals or where the small children are there and so on. Some of the popular forms, let us look at some of the popular forms of WLAN. The first and the most popular form is 82.11, second is HIPERLAN. Home RF, which is used uh, for connecting the home appliances, Bluetooth, we all are very familiar with it and MANETS that is mobile ad hoc networks. So, in this module, we will discuss in this module and the uh, uh, next module to this, we will discuss 82.11. HIPAA LAN is a wireless LAN standard which was developed in Europe, but it did not become much popular. Home RF, Bluetooth and Manets also we will be discussing in the next lectures. Now, let us talk about IEEE 82.11. Let us see that 
how it got evolved and what is the current uh, status of this standard. As we know that this is a standard for WLANs, but what is the uh, triggering event which led to the development of WLAN? It all started with the, uh, uh, the important event in 1985 when FCC, which stands for Federal Communications Commission, deregulated the spectrum from 2.4 gigahertz to 2.5 gigahertz for use only by industrial, scientific and medical communities. That is at that time, this part of the spectrum was available only to these three communities. And in 1985, FCC deregulated those communities from the use of these spectrum. So, what happened? The spectrum was available for the indi individuals. It was an exciting news. It was an excellent opportunity for wireless application developers because they now could develop without worrying about the investing or licensing. So, what happened was that it led to many developments like uh, many people got uh, uh, excited and they started off with new developments, but all those developments were more of individual than a uh, standard. So, these developments were proprietary, they were expensive, slow, they lacked widespread availability or adoption. So, in this scenario, IEEE 82.11 standard was developed to provide a reliable, fast, inexpensive, robust wireless communication standard that could operate on license free ISM band. So, from here it all started, it opened a new era of wireless networks. It uh, soon it gained much, uh, very much popularity and much of its success lies that it has the compatibility with the existing 82.3 ethernet. That is, uh, via this uh, communication standard, the wired and the wireless networks can communicate with each other. But as everything, nothing is static. So, this standard also, it did not developed as a static set standard, but it went on evolving in different standards, which were very much known as the variants or the amendments to the original standards. And those amendments, there, there is a very interesting nom nomenclature for those amendments. They are known as like, they are prefixed by uh, English alphabetical letter, like the amendments are known as IEEE 82.11a, which was the original then B, C and so on. So, till now almost every letter from A to Z has been covered in amendments. So, after its initial conceivement, many other standards were released as amendments to the original form and they were named as, as I just said, IEEE 82.11 and up to IEEE 82.11 Z. But the thing was that these standards were very much different from each other in terms of the bandwidth, in terms of the modulation, in terms of the technique, in terms of the physical layer, security, roaming, etcetera. So, there was a lot of confusion because so many standards was developed. So, uh, to sort out this problem, in 2007, IEEE published a standard 82.11-2000 standard. That is, it consolidated all the existing standards of that time into one standard. So, it is a consolidated set of specifications for all the amendments that were published till 2007 and they were rolled up into one common standard. Then in 2012, again a next consolidated standard was released which includes amendments like in uh, uh, standard 82.11-2007, the amendments which were rolled were A, B, D, E, G, H, L and J. Next consolidated standard was released in March 2012 in which the amendments K, N, P, R, S, U, uh, V, W, Y and Z were consolidated. Now, the latest release is the standard including amendments AE, AA, AD, AC 
and AF which was released in December 2016. After that also most recent amendments are in process named AX, AY and AZ and which are most probably to release in 2018. Let us look at, uh, so this was about hi, how uh, IEEE 82.11 evolved and what is the current scenario of this standard. Now, let us look at the functioning of IEEE 82.11 and the infrastructure of it. Before that, let us find one thing that IEEE 82.11 works in two different modes, infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode. That is WLAN works in two modes, infrastructure and ad hoc mode. What is the difference between these two modes? In infrastructure mode, devices communicate with each other via a access point which may be a wireless router. So, as in a star topology, there is a central hub where all the devices communicate with each other via that central hub. So, similarly, in infrastructure LAN also the central hub is known as the access point and all the devices communicate with each other via this access point only. Whereas, in ad hoc mode, no infrastructure or access point is there all the devices ad hocly communicate with each other. You can also see in the diagram that uh, uh, in the infrastructure mode, this is the access point, these are the devices and they are communicating via this access point. Whereas, in the ad hoc mode, there is no access point, the devices are just communicating with each other. Now, let us look at the architecture of infrastructure based LAN. <laughs> It is a cellular architecture. The whole system is divided into cells or cluster. Each cell is known as a basic service set. So, you have seen in the diagram also is that there are cells, each cell has got a access point and there are devices. In IEEE 82.11 terminology, these devices are known as stations. So, this entire cell is known as a basic service set. As we said, each BSS is controlled by one base station which is known as the access point. So, a cell consists of stations and access point. What are stations? Stations are nothing but IEEE 82.11 compliant network interface cards. Access point is a wireless router which can also have additional capabilities which we will just see. So, all the uh, clients or all the devices and the access points must be configured to the same network name or SSID in one BSS. Data packets to be transmitted from any system connected with the LAN to wireless station will go through the access point. So, this topology as I said that it can be imagined as a st uh, uh, is close to star topology in wired network where all the devices connect via a central hub. Now, one cell would not suffice for all the communications and it is not also wise to uh, concentrate the whole bandwidth on one particular cell. So, there are many cells or many BSS and they also are connected to each other. So, multiple BSS form extended service set that is ESS. This ESS is connected to the backbone LAN or the distribution system the providing the connectivity between the WLAN and the Ethernet. The access point provides connectivity between as I said between the wireless network and the hardwired LAN network. This backbone can be Ethernet or it can also be wireless. So, the access point converts the protocol from wireless 82.11 to uh, it converts the packets from wireless 82.3 protocol to the packets 82.11 and uh, vice versa. So, one 82.11 LAN can also be connected to another 82 LAN via a portal. So, all these things which are just jotted down we can see in this diagram. Uh, there is a access point, then these are the wireless stations 
the wireless stations communicate via the access point. So, this is one BSS, this is another BSS consisting of same the access point and the wireless stations and as we said that the collection of these BSS is known as ESS or the extended service set. We just said that the access point on different BSS are connected to a distribution system which is also known as a portal, uh, uh, sorry which is also known as a backbone. We uh, talked about the concept portal, what is portal? It connects 82.11 LAN to another 82 LAN. So, you can see here that using the portal, the two networks can be connected. So, this is the basic architecture of WLAN in infrastructure mode. Now, about the ad hoc mode, the wireless network is composed only of stations, there is no access point, the stations communicate directly with one another and the basic service set here it is known as independent basic service set. Why independent basic service set? Because it is not connected with anyone and here the communication is directly over wireless radio waves complement, complement to 82.11 packets. So, here you can see that this is a WLAN in ad hoc mode. Now, which is better infrastructure mode uh, the LAN working in infrastructure mode or the LAN working in ad hoc mode? obviously both must be having their own strength and limitations. Let us first look at the advantages of WLAN working in infrastructure mode. Uh, in infrastructure mode, there is a access point and using the exp uh, uh, that ex uh, access point, more and more devices can be connected to it. So, a wireless LAN can be easily expanded. Wired and wireless network, uh, wirelessly network com uh, computers can communicate with each other because there is a provision of the uh, communication between the wired network and the wireless network. If there are multiple access points to the network as in a office or a large homes, the users can roam between interlocking access point cells without ever losing a connection to the network. If access point is with the built in router and firewall, yes this is a very important advantage. The router allows to share internet access between all the computers and the firewall hides your network. So, as I said that a router can also have additional capabilities, this is what I was talking about. It can, can uh, have uh, if the access point is with a built in router, it allows to share the internet access and if it has a firewall, it hides the network. The design of infrastructure uh, based LAN is simpler because most of the network functionality lies within the access points and the devices are independent of the complexity. But then ad hoc LAN also has its advantages and most of the important advantages that it can be set up anywhere, anytime like your Bluetooth. Ad hoc networks are simple to set up. Uh, for a Bluetooth LAN, what do you need? You just need a device which wants to set up a connection that will become the master and whoever devices are in stage, it will connect them to the network or if they are wishing to and it will form a network and it is as simple as that. Ad hoc networks are inexpensive because the cost associated with the infrastructure LAN as compared to the ad hoc LAN is the cost associated with the purchase of access point. Ad hoc networks are fast, why? Right? Because as I said that in the infrastructure LAN, the devices communicate via the access point only. Therefore, uh, the, the time required is more. Throughput rates between the two wireless network adapters are twice fast when an ad, uh, access point is not used. Ad hoc mode is suitable for quick wireless connection setup in office rooms, hotels or in places where wired structure is not available. So, we just saw the different modes in which the WLAN works. 
that is infrastructure mode and the ad hoc mode and uh, we also saw the uh, strength of each of the mode and we just saw the architecture of infrastructure based LAN that is consist of cells and uh, those uh, cells consist of stations and access point. Now we will see that uh, how the cells are formed that is how the frequencies are allocated to the cells and the most important thing which is to be kept in mind is that the cells which are the nearby cells should be allocated disjoint frequencies or distinct frequencies so that their transmission do not interfere with each other. So, in WLAN also the cells which form BSS the adjacent or the neighboring cells are allocated disjoint frequency. You can see in the diagram that A, B, C, D, E are uh, uh, 5 cells which are close to each other and I have color coded the frequencies that is uh, different color indicates different frequencies. But what is this? A and E both are having same frequency, but as I said that uh, they should be assigned different frequencies so that they do not interfere with each other. But mind it, just look at the distance between the two cells. It is the this distance is so much that A and E are practically radio isolated from each other that is their transmissions would not interfere each other right. So, different cells can be allocated different frequencies or different channels like uh, if uh, uh, DSS support that is direct sequence spread spectrum support is there 13 channels are used and for frequency hopping 79 channels are used in the available spectrum 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz. Now, suppose let us look at the example of using disjoint frequencies. Uh, this is an example where the W line has to be set up for a three story building and uh, uh, for each floor the three uh, cells needs to be there and the available channels are 1, 6 and 11. So, only three channels have been uh, are available and using these uh, three channels total 9 routers are been configured for 3 stories and just look at the channels they are not overlapping channels at all. Uh, so, uh, you can see that uh, very interestingly or very strategically the channels have been used to reduce the horizontal interference as well as the vertical interference. You can see that uh, here channel 11, 6, 1 is there, these are disjoint, here 11, 1, 6 is there which are disjoint channels and so on. So, the frequencies which are being allocated are, are disjoint in nature. In this module, we had the introduction of a very popular standard for wireless local area networks known as IEEE 82.11 popularly known as Wi-Fi. So, to start in this lecture, we saw many of the advantages of wireless LANs as compared to wired LAN as in the mobility is supported, scalability is more, the installation cost is less, speed of installation is more, the capacity is more that is more users can be accommodated, robustness is more as compared to wired networks and many more advantages. We said that if the uh, network is wireless, then there must be some way through which the information is transmitted and that is through electromagnetic spectrum. So, according as the networks uses which band of electromagnetic spectrum, we saw two flavors of WLAN that is one using infrared and other using radio based. We saw the advantages and limitations of both as in that infrared ran the most important limitation is that it needs line of sight, but has the added advantages that it is simple and cheap and do not interfere with the electrical appliances, but the range of infrared uh, communication is less. Wherein the radio based communications the range is more they interfere with the electrical appliances uh, they work in license free band which are which is a very less spectrum 
but uh, uh, the added advantage is that they can pass through, they are not easily obstacles, they do not need line of sight and so on. Then we saw that uh, uh, what led to the evolution of IEEE 82.11 and the triggering factor which we saw was the deregulation of 2.4 gigahertz ISM band to those particular communities only and making it public and a uh, development of a standard which was, uh, uh, which was uh, inexpensive and more importantly it was adaptable to the existing standards. We also saw that since it, its inception there are many variants which have been developed and we had a quick glance over all the variants. In the supplementary material to this module you can find the whole tabular summary of the existing IEEE 82.11 standards when they were published and the specifications of those particular standards you can have a look at uh, uh, in the supplementary material. Then we saw that the IEEE 82.11 LAN works in two modes, infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode. In infrastructure mode an access point is required whereas in ad hoc mode no access point is required. We saw the basic architecture of 82.11 in infrastructure mode that is a cell, in the cell there is access point, there are devices, two cells form a ESS that is a extended service set which can be connected to a backbone through which they can be connected to the wired network and we saw both the advantages of infrastructure LAN also and ad hoc LAN also. Then we saw that if you want to set up a WLAN how the frequencies are being allocated to different cells and we concluded that the disjoint frequencies should be given to the cells which are near to each other, but for frequency reuse the same frequency can be given to two cells if they are radio isolated from each other or they are far from each other. So, we are done with the architecture of 82.11 in this model. There is lot more to come as in the medium access layer, the uh, security features available with IEEE 82.11 and many more. So, these topics we will be covering in the coming modules. Till then, happy reading, enjoy your day. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very much.